In our preparation for repairing leather, we want to stress, first of all, the appropriate cleaning. I might recommend that in the automobile, you cover the console or other, other things that might be damaged or spotted even by the cleaners. First of all, we're going to use the Z7, which is a water-based cleaner, and that removes all of our dirt and common soil. I generally do one part of the seat at a time, say the back of the seat first, and then the bottom second. Uh, for this demonstration, uh, we're just going to clean only the backrest. It's very important to use the brush to get down into the grain and also to break up the surface tension because otherwise this cleaner would beat up and leave spots. So as you can see, the Z7 is very aggressive, may even take a little of the top color off, but that's excellent in preparation for your dye work. The second product, of course, that you should always use is the silicone wash, and this will help to remove any residual uh, protectorants, such as Armor All and other leather protectorants. Okay, that's good. If you still have some residue, and this is very slippery, you may elect to use the stronger solvent, and that would be the leather prep. <clears throat> we see some damage here, which is very typical. This is some scuffing. Uh, Showing a little bit of the leather fiber beneath. It's, uh, it needs maybe a little bit of filling at first glance. Uh, we're going to introduce a product here called uh, Sand Away. The purpose of this product is as we're sanding the damage, the Sand Away helps to dissolve the finish. Because often the damage is in the finish, not in the leather itself. So if we can smooth away this finish, there's no repairing. It's a great advantage. But we're going to demonstrate how we can do that. Now I'm using 100 grit in this case, so don't be afraid to use a, a very heavy grit sandpaper in this particular step. <clears throat> I might uh, also uh, mention that uh, sand away is also very appropriate as a one-step cleaner in the event that you're uh, in a hurry or just doing a small area, you can, you can uh, one-step it with this. And I need to get a little bit more. Okay. As you can see, we pull up a good bit of the color here. I'm going to follow by some sand away on this cloth and wiping away our excess damage. The sand away product does require a little bit of drying since it's soaked into the leather just slightly. So let's pause just for a minute and let this dry and then we'll introduce some more finishing products. Okay, it's very important that we have our leather completely dry at this point before starting any filling processes. Now we have our choice of fillers depending on the damage that's remaining here. We could use the deep leather fill for any major scratches that are still evident. We could use leather fill for some lesser damage. And then as a final skin coat over the surface, we can use our leather cream fill. 
And as I'm looking here, I think that the leather fill in this case would be sufficient. As a matter of fact, the, there's not much damage uh, remaining at all because the sand away, sand away, <laughs> sanded away all of the damage here. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of the leather fill and I'm going to wipe it into the dry fibers that we've created with our sanding process. One advantage of wiping it in is that we don't have any sharp edges that we might otherwise have from the palette knife or from the spreader. And we'll take just a moment to dry this as well. And I always like to finish up with a coating of the leather cream fill. I can apply that the same way by wiping it in. This puts a very nice, smooth finish coat on in preparation for your texture or your color. And we'll dry this as well. Now just to help blend the area, we have our choice of spray grains. We have water-based spray grain, and we have VM12 spray grain. Both of these are water-based products, and they work exceptionally well on leather. So we just have our choice, and you will discover on using these how well each of them works. For this demonstration today, let's just show how the VM12 works. We want to spray at a distance and just blend lightly the repair area like that. A little bit of heat will help to accelerate the drying. Now I'd like to add a guide coat of color just to see how far along we are. This would be just a very light coat. And this will enable us to see how, the, how well the texture is doing and how well the repair looks overall. One thing I might recommend here is also to feel the repair area. Sometimes the uh, spray texture will leave a rough feel to it. If so, and we, we don't have that problem here, but if so, some 400 grit sandpaper works very nicely just to smooth the repair area out. And of course, you can see where it's highlighting the grain by your sanding. And this just gives it an extra nice, smooth finish. What I would recommend here is just take a cloth and wipe the powder off in preparation for our final color coat. Prior to our coloring, I just did want to mention some of the additives that are available for leather. For example, if the leather was brand new looking, had a nice matte or flat finish, we can add a little bit here we are, the water-based flattener. We can add a little bit of this to our color. We, we've pre-mixed the color for the seat, okay? If we want uh, uh, a little bit more flexing, if the leather is soft, like a glove leather, for example, or like a leather jacket, 
then a little extra uh, flexing is good. We can, it's our choice to add some. Another product, the water base uh, slip additive, is intended to give an extra slick finish, which uh, would imitate as though you had already put protectorants on there. If the customer likes the feel of a protectorant, add the slip additive as opposed to putting a protectorant on there afterwards. And then in areas where there is high abuse, such as moving in and out of the seat, such as here, we can add crosslinker. The benefit of the crosslinker is that it chemically bonds that layer of coating uh, to make it stronger and also more resistant to uh, uh, other chemicals, such as uh, any alkali or solvent-based chemicals that uh, might be used to clean over top of the repair area at a later date. <clears throat> Another product we could apply before the color is the high tech primer. This is like an insurance uh, product. Anytime you think you might have difficulty with adhesion of your top coat color, first of all, you can wipe or spray on the high tech primer. This is especially useful in areas such as steering wheels, because with the steering wheel, the hand puts oils deep into the leather and it might pose an adhesion problem. Uh, also, people eat in their automobiles quite often and the grease from their, their food and so forth penetrates. So a great insurance product anytime you want to make sure that that top coat stays. Well, let's move on and just finish up our color coat on our repair. We don't want to spray too close. Get back for a nice, even finish. That way we're not too shiny, we're not too heavy. Go around the corner a little bit, just to help to blend. And we'll dry that. <clears throat> 